Uh, good morning, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, this is uh, a case demonstration uh, on how to assess uh, pulmonary hypertension uh, by echocardiography step by step. This is a real case. So this is a 28-year-old female. She is presenting with shortness of breath of two years duration. She has been treated by analgesics and beta blockers for two years. She came to me and this was her echo study. This is how you perform an echocardiography when uh, you suspect the pulmonary hypertension during the case. As you see, this is a parasternal long axis uh, view. Um, there is no abnormality seen here. While assessing the parasternal long axis view, you take the measurements of the left ventricle that were normal. Then you take the measurements of the left atrium and aorta, aorta crote, and they were also normal, left atrial diameter 3.2 and aorta 2.7. After this, you assess the uh, right ventricle uh, size in the parasternal long axis. In this case, it was 3.3, and the normal is up to 3.7, so the right ventricle was not dilated. Um, this is what you can get from the parasternal long axis view. Before going to the parasternal short axis view, I advise you to go to the uh, RV inflow uh, and take a continuous over the tricuspid valve. After this, you tilt, you rotate your probe and get the parasternal short axis view as this at the level of the great vessels. You can measure here the RVOT proximal that in this case is 2.99 centimeter and the normal is up to 3.5. After this, you can measure the RVOT distal that is 2.38 in this case and the normal is up to 2.7. After this, you I put I have put in this case in this patient a continuous over the uh, pulmonary valve, but there was no pulmonary gurge jet, so I couldn't measure uh, the uh, the peak uh, pulmonary gurge velocity or the delayed our late uh, end diastolic pulmonary gurge velocity uh, to calculate. Uh, whether the mean or the diastolic pulmonary artery pressure. However, this was the first positive sign suggestive of pulmonary hypertension in this case. As you can see here, the acceleration time is 103 milliseconds, which is less than 105. Also, you can appreciate the systolic notching in the pulsed wave. How we get this, we put pulsed over the pulmonary artery, just pulmonary valve, just proximal to the valve. It is indicative of precapillary pulmonary hypertension. Uh, while in the parasternal short axis view, you can tilt the probe to get the level of the ventricles. Uh, I know it's not ideal, but you can see some sort of flattening of the septum. It is not the typical flattening, but there is some sort of flattening of the interventricular septum. After this, we go to the apical four-chamber view. And the first sign here in the apical four-chamber view uh, that the basal uh, right ventricular diameter was 4.04 centimeters whereas the basal LV diameter is 3.23. So the basal RV divided by the basal LV will be ratio more than one, of course. Though the dimensions of the RV are not yet dilated. It's uh, uh, 4.04, uh, still less than 4.1 basal, and uh, it is 3.8 mid, a bit dilated, and the long axis is 6.1, less than 8.3. So 
sometimes you find the RV great bigger than the LV, yet the dimensions of the RV have not yet passed the cutoff to diagnose dilated right ventricular dimensions. While in the same view, we can uh, take the TAPSI and also the S-wave velocity. In this case, I did only the TAPSI. And it was 2.5, 25. And remember this number because we will make use of it soon. So it is normal. There is no impairment of the TAPSI. Here was the continuous wave over the tricuspid valve that shown only mild tricuspid regurgitation. And we had a tricuspid regurgitant velocity approaching 4. It was 4.03, uh, which made a gradient of 65. The IVC was dilated more than 2.1, and it did not collapse adequately with inspiration or sniffing. This was uh, continuous over the uh, portal vein, and it didn't show any changes that uh, suggest right-sided congestion. So there is another sign. When we divide the uh, systolic pulmonary artery pressure, we got that from the tricuspid regurgitant 65, and we will add 15 because the IVC is dilated and incompressible. So we have systolic pulmonary artery pressure of 80. When we divide the TAPSI over the systolic pulmonary artery pressure, that gives an idea on the RV pulmonary artery coupling, it is 0.3125. So back to the algorithm from the guidelines, this patient had a tricuspid regurgitant velocity of four, so she doesn't need uh, echo signs. She is a high probability she should undergo right heart cath. But what? Other echo signs of pulmonary hypertension did this patient have? She had the RV to LV more than one. She had the TAPSI less than 0.55, it was 0.3. She had the mid systolic notching with acceleration time of 103 milliseconds. She had a dilated IVC and incompressible. And actually, I didn't show this image, but she had a right atrial area of 19 centimeter square. So the next best step for this patient is to do an invasive right heart cath. Thank you.